in terms of whether they can hit the mainland, it looks like they're making strides, whether they can miniaturize a nuclear weapon and put it on that missile and hit the United States, they're not there yet. But the experts estimate it can happen within President Trump's term, so this four-year term, which is regrettable, of course. So they, I think what needs to be done is we need to go back to, back to 1994, really, when we had the agreed framework, which was basically freezing North Korea's nuclear program. The North Koreans will not like this, so to get there, I think President Trump's doing the right thing in terms of getting the Chinese on board with a harsher sanctions um, regime and trying to put pressure on North Korea. The only way they'll go to the negotiating table is if we put pressure on them. It's just what, what always comes into my mind is that if you've got a, a, a leader that doesn't care what economic sanctions do to his people, I don't know how you influence him. How do you hurt him? What is he? What, well, it, yes, exactly. You need to hurt the elites around him, I and mean, we do that in the Russia context. You need to make sure that, um, I mean, there is, a, there is a point where he would get worried if his people were starving again, for example, I would hope. Um, certainly the fuel that China provides, I mean, over 90 percent of North Korea's fuel is provided by China, and most of all their other trade is with China. So the Chinese have a lot of leverage, and I think uh, certainly the North Korean leader does have a threshold. Y you know, he can't, he can't freeze and starve his people, certainly not indefinitely, and certainly there's a, the, the elites in Pyongyang, he can't starve them or freeze them. With, with China, would you say that, that, what do they hold more dear, the, the relationship they have with the United States or the relationship that, with, with North Korea? I mean, if push came to shove, who would they side with, do you think? Well, that's a hard question. I mean, I don't think they side with either the United States or North Korea, but frankly speaking, their objectives are different from ours. China wants North Korea to continue to be a buffer state between it and South Korea, where we have, as you know, almost 30,000 U.S. troops. They don't want a nuclear South Korea either, so that's where maybe we could get them to apply pressure because they don't want to encourage the South to develop their own nuclear deterrent. But China really wants North Korea to continue to exist. They don't want North Korea to collapse in a huge mess because, of course, that would result in a refugee flow to China and likely a Chinese deployment of troops if to their border, if not over the border which would be a problem. So they, they're more interested in stability than we, than we are in the sense that our number one objective is removing the nuclear threat from North Korea. We don't want instability either, but, that, but our number one objective is not maintaining stability, which is China's. China will turn a blind eye for the moment to the nuclear program. And I guess it's moot whether they can hit us because we have allies that we don't want to throw under the bus either, and they're right, right in, in the neighborhood. So there's no Correct. answer. Yeah, I mean, this is the most. Yeah, they can hit Japan, South Korea, but they they can hit them with conventional weapons. That's the other reason why I think the president's rhetoric. It, I'm not sure whether it's helpful, and it it may. I don't want to. I don't want to diminish the threat posed by the nuclear weapons, but the conventional threat is already real. It's already every day. The South Koreans and our, and I mentioned our troops there and also now in Japan are under direct threat from North Korean conventional attacks. So, I think you know we need to kind of pause the rhetoric, but keep up the the pressure economically. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.